Well, thank you, uh, everyone, for joining this afternoon. It's a real pleasure to be actually standing in a building that has been prevented from being torn down. So I'm really, really excited to see that uh, we're making efforts in Hong Kong to preserve our history and, uh, and use it towards new purposes as we go along. Um, just a brief introduction on uh, myself. I'm one of the co-founders of Gettys. We started uh, Gettys uh, 26 years ago upon graduation from Cornell University. Uh, and my partners and I have been continuously working together and changing as we went along to, uh, to capture the interests and the needs and answer to the needs of our hospitality clients. And to that end, we're not just strictly an interior design firm. We also offer interior architecture services, branding services, and development services. Uh, and all of those really exclusively to the hospitality industry. Um, as we already alluded to, um, I have been here since 2007, and I hope I never have to leave. I love Hong Kong. And uh, we have uh, opened our office in Manila in 2012. And from our Hong Kong office, uh, we service uh, pretty much everything from the Middle East all the way to Australia, even though we haven't had a project in Australia yet. So uh, when we're talking about green design, breakthrough in design and sustainability, we've really come a very long way in a very short amount of time. And uh, just to preface my talk, I, uh, I have US examples of our work because we haven't quite come as far in Asia as we have in the States. But I'm sure it's not that far off. So in a relatively uh, short amount of time, talk about a breakthrough. Uh, a little over 20 years ago, the conversation about sustainability was mainly among intellectuals, designers, architects, and uh, that was pretty much it. All of our clients were asking us, well, you know, what do you think about this green stuff? You know, is it really worth anything? So can I have a show of hands in the audience who is not familiar with uh, LEED certification system or BREAM certification system. Everybody is now familiar with that. Great, so since the first published BREAM methodology in 1990 and the founding of the US GBC, which is the U United States Green Building Council in 1993, uh, green design is hardly still the, in the purview of, of just a few industry professionals. Today, uh, talking about the breakthrough, our clients want it to be green and they want it to differentiate themselves and their projects um, from the competition. And I would say the designers, the young designers that we see in our office today have been, every single one of them has been trained to uh, think way more uh, earth consciously. So again, my own experience in Asia since 2007 has not yet led to a fully uh, certified lead green building or hotel, but I am very, very confident it is not too far away. Uh, in fact, currently we're working on a multifamily housing project in, New in uh, Hong Kong, uh, and the desire was to be green, but not quite there to make the effort to become certified. So we're making steps in the right direction. So um, green design really does not mean compromise. Green is luxury. It's sexy. Um, the smart and sustainable design is, is the careful and selective application of practices and materials to achieve design that's beneficial not only to the client, but the community and the environment as a whole. And that can be done with uh, the same level of quality as conventional design, if not better. Um, it is our mantra at Gettys. Um, so in our firm's mission, it's our goal to educate our team and our clients about what it truly means to be green 
from construction, from design through construction to the operational issues uh, of a hotel. If you think about the carbon footprint that a hotel can have on uh, fragile environments, it's, uh, it's really our responsibility to educate our clients to, to really observe some of the best practices, even though it may not be a conventional certification. So, again, how do we do this? How do we achieve this lofty goal? Um, so, our strategy is um, we really invest, especially in the U.S., in the LEED certification for our, um, our young designers. And it is a requirement for everyone who works for us, if they're not yet green educated, LEED certified, to become so. Um, in terms of our own offices, uh, if I can just talk about recent decisions in our Hong Kong offices, we've been in the same space for uh, almost eight years now. So um, what do we do? We look at new offices. What does that entail? It means moving. It means reprinting things. It means uh, packing. It means throwing out things that we can't transport. It means restoring our current office space to what it was when we got it, which is part of Hong Kong leases. You have to restore exactly the way that you found it, even though some of the improvements that we might have made would have been great for the next tenant. So especially in Hong Kong, a move has a severe environmental impact. Well, we came to the decision that we should stay where we are, not only because of the costs uh, involved to our firm, but also to the costs of the environment and the cost of simply moving away from this exciting area that is Soho Hollywood Road. So we've decided to stay and also with all those fantastic things happening in our neighborhood such as PMQ, uh, why would we move anywhere else? So that was our uh, strategy in Hong Kong. Um, again, our, our workforce is about 50% uh, LEED certified and um, and our current uh, team members uh, help other uh, aspiring team members to, which are uh, trying to become LEED certified with study groups, et cetera. We also financially support the, um, the costs that uh, it takes to become LEED certified. There's books you have to buy, there's tests you have to take, and as a company, we pay for that. We reimburse our uh, team members in full. Um, then um, we also perform our, our business operations with the environment in mind by taking advantage of today's technology. As a, as a global company with projects really all over the world, um, we're relying on, on communication systems more and more. We have video conference calls, we have go-to meetings whenever possible to avoid having to travel uh, to our clients. That's not to say that we don't travel because the human interaction is a must, but there are many meetings where travel literally can be avoided very, very easily. Um, in terms of our offices in Chicago, which are, is our headquarters, we relocated early this year in February. Uh, we designed our office with um, sustainability every step of the way. We don't have individually assigned desks because some people do travel quite a bit. We have workstations that when you come in, you pick one and you, you do your thing. Um, so we actually reevaluated the way that our team works to emphasize collaboration while minimizing our uh, carbon footprint. Our offices in Chicago are currently going through the process of uh, green certification. And that's 2014. And in 2012, our Miami office, which relocated, um, oops, hang on, was um, uh, certified LEED Silver. We also collaborate with our clients on sustainable design solutions to create really distinctive designs and drive long-term return on investment. That's really what uh, clients want. They want a return on their investment. They don't want to build uh, monuments to themselves, typically, um, but most of the time they invest in real estate to drive a return. So each and every project is approached with an eye on sustainable practices. Um, 
And green design is really applicable in all locations, urban and uh, remote resort locations. To us, it's really an all-encompassing philosophy, uh, which reaches as far as, uh, as community service. Uh, we have a very active program uh, in community service, and we encourage our, um, all of our team members to devote some of their time to community service, which, which again, uh, it's an all-encompassing philosophy. You can't just practice um, your daily work by you know, being green and then uh, go home and uh, not care about the environment or the communities that you live in. So we, uh, we go beyond, uh, beyond uh, what, uh, what we practice every day and support local institutions. Uh, one of the examples in Chicago is we provided services for, to the uh, Ronald McDonald House uh, in Chicago, which is attached to the large and largest uh, children's hospital. Um, and, uh, and it serves uh, kids uh, with terminal illnesses and it allows uh, family members to stay at a reduced cost or no cost to accompany the children's uh, treatment. So as you can see from these slides, um, it's, a, it's a LEED gold certified uh, project, which you can't tell from the slides. But if you, if you look at the slides, there's really no compromise on materials that we've chosen or um, environments that we've created. Uh, there's really not much compromise that you have to go into in terms of uh, interior design. We continue our involvement uh, with the Ronald McDonald House uh, today as in the States as well as here in Hong Kong. Uh, we routinely attend the local um, Ronald McDonald House and play with the children, provide meals, um, and you know, therefore uh, give some time to uh, local um, uh, services as well. Um, this is another uh, project that uh, we designed a couple of years ago. It's uh, probably in one of the most uh, eco-sensitive locations in the world. It's uh, in Costa Rica. So this project was designed to fit in very seamlessly and be very respectful of the delicate rainforest environment. And we did that through using indigenous materials, um, merging indoor, outdoor as much as possible, uh, from an engineering standpoint, um, most of the energy was uh, uh, through photovoltaic and solar, and uh, that recycling was really paramount to the entire guest experience. As you can probably uh, know by having attended or uh, stayed rather in uh, hotels yourself, there's a tremendous amount of trash that gets generated. So uh, by recycling and composting, we um, minimize the uh, uh, impact on the environment and the gas that it takes to haul the trash away from the resort. Um, this, these are the uh, guest rooms and uh, again this is a very family oriented resort so uh, and designed for long stay so you have a very comfortable dining environment uh, as well. So for, uh, for a deeper look, as I originally mentioned, Gettys does not only provide interior design, interior architecture, and blah, blah, blah. We also invest and therefore put our money uh, where our mouth is. So uh, when we say sustainability is, is really not a trend, uh, we strongly believe it's the future uh, standard for green building and design. So the uh, tagline of the Hotel Felix in Chicago is happy naturally. The, um, the challenge, uh, the, the scope was, um, was, was really all of our service to provide all of our services and we co-invested with one of our clients in this project. So uh, we tried to create really through the design process and the future operation process a very holistic experience. So the scope was an adaptive reuse of an existing pre-war structure, which you can see here, into a, a boutique hotel. Uh, it was a very uh, good uh, location in terms of proximity to the major shopping area within walking distance, less than five blocks. And um, 
and it used to house uh, a low, uh, low income people that did not have enough money to, uh, to rent an apartment. So um, even prior to the development process, we spent about two years uh, trying to relocate the occupants without uh, basically shutting down the building and putting everybody on the street. So that's even before we started designing, um, that's how we approached the project. Um, so it was uh, a 225 room hotel with uh, some very small rooms. We call them petites. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's really still today um, uh, one of the preferred locations for people to stay in Chicago. I encourage you to visit uh, TripAdvisor. So um, by, try, by saving this building rather than raising it and building a structure that is twice as tall with twice as many rooms, we actually preserved a bit of Chicago history and tried to create something that would generate a return that is equal to or better than making a larger investment and in building a new structure. Um, so the services, again, we provided was uh, consulting and uh, development and consulting, interior design, interior architecture, procurement, and project management. So our multiple disciplines within our team had been involved uh, in all of the thought process before the design even started. And so uh, by locally sourcing um, our furniture and construction materials using recycled materials as much as possible, implementing um, a clean, um, a green sort of green cleaning program. So none of the cleaning um, products that are used to clean your room and uh, the public areas are, are uh, harmful to your health. Uh, and even up to the point of assembling an impressive art collection made entirely out of uh, recycled materials, we uh, managed to create a very unique space with uh, wide ranging uh, environmental initiatives. So in the lobby, uh, low voltage LED lighting, that's, uh, that's not really an innovation anymore, but uh, this project was uh, probably designed 2006-2007. Um, we serve only organic coffee and tea. We have a paperless front desk. You get an email copy of your bill. Uh, rather than the two copies that you usually get when you check out of a hotel, the first one to look at and toss, and the second one for you to keep. Um, we have uh, trash cans with uh, recycling compartments all over the hotel. Um, way back when, in 2009, uh, recycling was not yet a big thing in, in Chicago. Unfortunately, it's still not yet a big, big thing in uh, in Hong Kong, but uh, when I go visit my family in Europe, uh, I have to make an extra effort to put the right trash into the three different trash cans that are available. And I think it has a significant impact and would have a significant impact if such a thing would uh, be implemented in Hong Kong, um, given our limited space and given our overflowing landfills. Um, Uh, in the guest rooms, our carpets are fully from uh, recycled materials. Uh, we have a motion sensor HVAC control, uh, which yields the hotel savings about 30,000 US dollars over what typically would have been spent. It has uh, uh, water waste reduction valves and saves about a million gallons of water a year. And it has bike racks and showers for the hotel employees to encourage the employees to either walk or bike to work um, or encourage taking public transportation, as well as be, have bikes available for guests. Um, and uh, on top of it all, uh, speaking of transportation, anybody that drives a Prius or a similar electric car gets free valet parking. And let me tell you, that's a big attraction for our guests. And again, anything that can be recycled out of the guest room waste is recycled. So these things are very, very simple uh, elements that everyone can incorporate into their design. So even if you're doing a project 
that is not necessarily following the strict certification process. You can use these elements and incorporate them into your design and into the operation. And you will make a very big difference, not only to the environment, but also to the bottom line of your clients. We call that guerrilla green. If we're not, to, if we're not uh, engaged to provide a certification process of our design, um, we just simply specify the right thing. So in our spa, all of the treatment products are eco-friendly. They're uh, not tested on animals, uh, made from natural materials. We have uh, bamboo flooring, which is a rapidly renewable resource. And uh, the decorations on the wall are made out of uh, recycled materials. Um, our fitness rooms, um, I, I wish we wouldn't even have to have a fitness room, but uh, Chicago, it does get cold in the winter, so we have uh, folks that like to exercise indoors, but uh, again, we have um, recycled flooring and uh, all of the cups and wipes and all those things that you tend to use and waste in, uh, uh, during your exercise routine are 100% compostable. Uh, in our uh, meeting rooms, we have um, cork flooring and complementary internet, so we don't have to do so much printing. And so the final uh, product is after two years of uh, construction, uh, Hotel Felix opened in uh, 2009 as Chicago's first LEED Silver certified hotel. Now, if you're a developer, you might uh, think back quickly at 2009 which was in the middle of a financial crisis. And if you were opening a hotel, that's probably what you'd like to avoid. But uh, by having a different angle on our product and a different marketing strategy, we were able to be very, very successful in um, achieving a higher market share than one would typically do with a newly opened hotel. And, uh, We've won a bunch of awards. Uh, we're mentioned in the Michelin Guide, and USA Today published us. Um, got the Local Beautification Award, Green Leader Award, Greenest Venue Award, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, as it happens today, we uh, developed also fairly close to this a sister hotel called the Godfrey, uh, which just opened in uh, uh, February of this year. So the conclusion is, as leaders in the hospitality industry, as thought, um, thought leaders in the hospitality industry, we owe it uh, to our clients, uh, our partners, the environment, uh, to keep a pulse on the emerging uh, practices and, uh, and do our part uh, to best utilize the resources that are available to you. So sustainability is not a trend. It's the future, and it should be the standard in, uh, for building and design. So thank you very much. Any questions? So we have time for questions. No? So quick question to you. So it seems like um, the forces that determine sustainability as a fad were not really spatial. Um, to give you an example of this, um, when Toyota released the Prius, they actually made a conscious effort to make the Prius look different from the other cars, right? So sort of making a statement that green is sexy, but also quirky and unique. Um, do you see that clients are demanding that in architecture as well? Um, for, for our clients in the hospitality industry, I don't think we want to be necessarily different within our design. We want to be able to show that good design, luxury design, design on a five-star level can also be green. Um, nobody wants to have a hotel room of, uh, you know, FSC certified plywood because that is the greenest material that you can use. But, uh, you know, we can specify our uh, furniture to be uh, made from uh, for certified product products or use as much recyclable materials as we can. So I think to answer your question, it should be green, but it shouldn't necessarily be different. Uh, it's something that uh, the, the developer can use in their marketing strategy. Um, 
it, it doesn't necessarily have to look like what people would typically expect, like, oh, this is green, this is organic. Uh, we'd like to show that you can have a conventional look, appropriate to luxury, but be entirely green as well. Um, since you don't really have a lot of visual cues that these materials are very sustainable or organic or whatnot, um, have you considered uh, using augmented reality or some sort of digital method to gain some more information like that? So, okay. Did you get that? Did you hear that? Um, you were asking me if we were using sort of technology to... to um well, more like, have you considered it um, as people are becoming more sustainable and creating more lead certified buildings? Um, what would you do to still lead, lead in this uh, manner of uh, being sustainable? I think that the best thing that you can use um, are materials um, that, well, I guess I would start from the simplest uh, problem in our industry. Um, people always want to build new, especially in this neck of the woods. So for us, it's always preferable to renovate something, you know, give it a new purpose, than starting fresh. In terms of technology, um, you know, we try to stay abreast of all of the new materials that come online. Many materials that used to, if you look on the back of you know, the fabric tags, for example, you will now have information on what portion of the fiber is recycled content or even if you can uh, recycle it after its useful life. Um, that's readily available today. In terms of uh, technology to find new materials, whenever they're made available to us, we will use technology, A, to search them out, um, but also incorporate technology into our designs so that we use less paper, that we use uh, things that, you know, just would uh, encourage waste. Uh, you know, daily menus, if you can present them on an iPad and you don't have to print them out, great. Uh, you know, the um, example I mentioned from, uh, from your hotel bill. Um, there are so many ways that, uh, that you can use new technology to become even greener um, that uh, you just have to look and use instead of wait for it to be presented. Did I answer your question? Uh, yes, and I think all those examples that you've mentioned are excellent, but I think those are things that uh, you as a designer have put into the hotel. And I, th I think the question I'm trying to ask is more about could you create ways in which the guests can now be more proactive for example, like if um, you had, you're using like very organic cotton sheets or something like that, that's uh, good for the environment to use. Is there a way for me as a user, a guest to, you know, buy a QR code or something, buy my own sheets for my own house or something like that, where I, I, I extend the experience that you've showed me into my daily life? Oh, absolutely. We have that... Um uh, I think the, uh, the general trend within the hospitality industry is, is to try to, to get that emotional connection to the brands. And uh, many hotel chains have led the way. I would say probably W is the first one to do that, where they have shops in their hotels that uh, actually sell some of the goods that, that you can have. Um, we, through social media, stay in constant touch with, with our guests. And uh, we will, like you said, say, hey, we have this new fabulous spa product. You know, it's available. Please try it. So we use the social media to, be, uh, to market the products that we have for sale or to answer the question that the guest has immediately, you know, virtually immediately. Um, and therefore, I think, create a better connection to, to our property, which is not necessarily you know, part of a big brand. Other questions? Do we have a question here? Hi. Um, I agree that green is the way to go, but um, I also know that currently there's a perception that if you go green, there's 
a higher cost involved in terms of capital expenditures. So my question is, how were you able to um, convince your clients, or in this case, your partners, to agree with going green? Um, that's, a, that's an excellent question, because there are uh, costs involved uh, in the development process, not only for the certification process, but to procure materials that, um, that are uh, you know, a better choice. So we analyzed all of those costs and compared it to uh, the impact of uh, the marketing campaign that we could have, number one. And number two, because we are a long-term hold investor, we didn't just develop this hotel to have it and then flip it to somebody for the next, uh, the next highest bidder. Uh, we were concerned about the long-term um, uh, carry costs uh, for energy and water use, etc. So after analyzing it and after analyzing it over a long-term period, and our long-term period is 20 years, uh, it was very clear that it made more sense to spend a little bit more money then than not to spend it. All right. Well, thank you so much, Ariana. This is great. And uh, please give a hand for Ariana.